Coming up, the most expensive sheepdog in Britain has a lot to prove. This book-loving Sheltie motivates kids to read. And this Doberman is the cat's meow. The security setup at Great Howell Farm is tight. Robbers have broken into Paul Evans' farm twice, so he's installed a security system with closed circuit monitoring. While his little lass sleeps, two cameras are trained on her kennel. She's bred very well, Cassis, but she's a very independent dog. Um, she just one of her own, one of her kind. One of a kind is right. Paul bought Cass at an auction. Sheepdogs usually sell for between 1,500 and 2,500 pounds. But there was a bidding war over this energetic border collie. In the end, Paul paid three and a half thousand pounds for Linwood Cassie, now known as Cass. That's nearly 6,000 US dollars. I was a bit frightened, you know, had I done the right thing? Is she gonna work for me? When I take her home, is she gonna do what I want? Um, it's a chance you take. Cass's sale at auction made the headlines, and she became a celebrity, and she hadn't even started work yet. Great Howell is a traditional sheep farm in the rolling hills of Herefordshire. Cass's job is to control the herd and move them according to Paul's commands. The job isn't as easy as it looks. A dog's got to be able to think for itself as well as me tell it what to do. I'm not right all the time. That's when the dog's got to use its own brain and say, I shouldn't be doing that. You know, she's got to be able to think for herself um, and do it right. So far, Paul's instincts have proven right. Cass's herding abilities are almost on a par with his lead dog, Sam. She's more like the older dogs I've got, which will work to please. Especially for her age, you very rarely get them at a young age doing what she's capable of doing. Many sheep farmers enter their champion herders in weekend competitions or trials to show off what they can do. For pricey cast, the expectations will be high. Cass was first and foremost purchased as a working dog for this farm, but Paul also thinks she has the makings of a champion. Now listen. Paul and Cass practice. In tomorrow's trial, she'll have to herd the sheep around obstacles in a set sequence. The final step is herding them into a pen, not her forte. Stan, Cass's weakness, if she's got any at the moment, is the pen in. Sometimes Cass will come in, she might come in a little bit too hard and try and push him a bit too hard. Shh, 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 shh. Stan! It's little things, but it's nothing that can be ironed out, you know, with age. Come on, Stan. Cass is still learning. Stan? She has to be fast and fluid in the trial or Stan. she'll lose points. Come by, Stan. Well, Cass, she sort of in between the two at the moment, between the growing up and the puppy stage. But she's grown up pretty fast. Cass gets the sheep into the pen this Stand. evening, yeah. but how will Stand. she do at tomorrow's trial? Good girl. Good girl, you listening. Good girl. The dinner bell signals the end of the workday. Cass's first competition tomorrow is on Paul's mind. I hope she'll do well. It varies from the day-to-day -day work. She's got to be more precise. She's got to listen to me. She's got to use her own head as well. Keep her cool, same as me. Um, but hopefully she'll do well. I've got our expectations. It's a chilly October morning. As young herding dogs and their owners arrive for the competition, Paul does his best to stay calm. The trial of today is a nursery trial. 
which is for young dogs under three years of age. It's their first time out. The judges keep track of the dog's every move with a detailed point system. Everyone is curious to see Britain's most expensive sheepdog in action. A few sheep trial veterans share some thoughts. He's got to have rapport with his owner to start with. There's no guarantee that a dog changing hands, the different personalities, that the dog is going to fit in. Occasionally you'll get a dog that's lovely at the sheep as long as you allow him to do as he pleases. But the minute you try to make him do what you want as opposed to what he wants, he can either sulk or maybe not even want to work. It's finally Cass's turn to compete. All eyes are on her. The course is a difficult one for a young, inexperienced dog. The first section is there when the dog should go away from you at right angles, go around the back of the sheep, give him plenty of room, and you stop him at 12 o'clock. Cass makes her way through the trial's obstacles, but the clock is ticking. She's only got 12 minutes to pen the sheep. Will she make it? Once you've done all the sections, all the driving, then you go from the ring to the pen, which is the last section, where I do have a little bit of trouble. We, we, stand. Come by. Time Come is by. running stand. out, but Cass has the sheep in position. Stand. If only they move forward. Get up. The judge calls time. Cass herded the sheep right up to the pen, but not quite in. Get out of him now. Get out. So near yet so far. Um, it's only a couple of seconds you want, but it went to be. In third place, Paul Evans with Cass. Despite Cass's penning problems, she places third, and everyone agrees if it hadn't been for the pen, she would have won. You can't see into the future. But uh, at this point in time, I'd say she would make the grade. That cat's got a, a wonderful future in her because she's only about 16, 17 months old, which is very young, you know. Unless something goes radically wrong, which I can't see, it's going to be a very, very, very good bitch. A very good bitch. Paul loves Cass. To him, she's worth every penny he spent. And she's got plenty of time to grow into a sheep trial champion. Of course, she's still only a baby yet, really. You know, with age, she starts thinking for herself. But she is an employee now and a good friend. Great literary dogs, Lassie, Old Yeller, and now Bud. This five-year-old Sheltie works at the Southern Idaho Learning Center. A good story, isn't it? Yes. Um... His patience and affection motivate special needs kids, like Rosalinda, to read out loud. Um, come on, Buddha Yeah, that's a boy. Get them birds. Bud's owner, Connie Sharkey, knows firsthand how a dog can change your life. It's a good story. <gasps> Look at the picture. The dog she had before Bud helped Connie through a difficult time. When we were involved in our aircraft accident in 1988, my husband decided that if I had a dog, it would keep me going and get me moving and out again. Dogs just have a sense of how to take care of you. And they are always there when you come home. If you're feeling bad, they know it and they help you out of it. When she got Bud, Connie was determined to share the uplifting power of a dog's attention. I was hoping that Buddy would be a therapy dog. You can't pick them out. It has to be in their own little temperament that they love people and love to be around them. He just turned out to be one of the special ones that can really enjoy it. Remembering the trouble her son had learning to read inspired Connie to train Bud as a reading motivator. There's a lot of special dogs out there, but not all of them are meant for this particular job. And he just fortunately fit right in. What's the story? 
good story. Bud is a certified reading dog. He's trained to sit attentively by the reader and look like he's reading. To become a reading dog, Buddy and other dogs like him have to do an aptitudes test and a skills test. Up you come. All right. There you go, Bud. Shelties are high energy dogs, but Bud is a calm little guy. All dogs within the reading program do have to learn to deal with being pulled on, being poked at. A little toothbrushing keeps this tutor's dog breath minty fresh. Buddy has to learn to get them to either settle down and read, come out of their little shell and read, and make it fun for the kids. When Connie puts on her red shirt, Bud knows it's time to go to work. Find the kids. Come on. Although they're often referred to as miniature collies, the Sheltie is actually a different breed, native to Scotland's Shetland Islands. Here we go. Traditionally used as herders, Shelties also make loving companions and are known for their affinity for children. After school at the reading center, Buddy tutors kids who need help with reading. Okay, boys and girls, guess what? We have a huge surprise today. Who's met Buddy before? Okay, well, some of you have met Buddy and some of you haven't. Buddy's really special. Come on in, buddy. I want. I have some kids for you to meet. Let's go say hi. Say hi. Does everybody like dogs? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, this is Buddy. Can you say hi to everybody? Yeah. Do you guys want to see some of Buddy's tricks that he does? Yeah. Okay. Hey, buddy. Are you ready to do a trick? Can you sit? Give us a high five. Now, how about the other one? <laughs> Good job. Can you talk? Where's she talking? <gasps> Good job. Okay. And you know what else Buddy likes to do? Melanie Lenkner set up the special needs reading program with Bud a year ago. Children are more receptive to the dogs because they're not judgmental. I see a, a real difference in their enthusiasm to come here, and what it does is um, provide them with some excitement around reading. There you go. Hi, Keegan. Hey. Are you ready to read to Bud? Yeah. All right. Hey, Bud's ready and willing, huh, Bud? Okay. Tom and Ricky and the Flying Wheel Mystery. All right, huh, Bud? Keegan has Asperger's disorder. This makes processing phonetics challenging for him. Bud's presence encourages Keegan to read out loud. If Keegan's attention wanders from his book, Bud gives him a nudge with his nose or puts a paw to the page. Hey. He thinks Dad. it's time to turn the page. My Uncle Joe. Bud's enthusiastic, but yeah. Keegan can work around his head. Mike Felton is Keegan's father. I, I remember when he first came home and told me he read to a dog, I, I almost got upset. I thought he was making things up. But the incredible thing is how excited the dog gets him to continue to read even when the dog's gone. That's the amazing thing. Yeah, you enjoy my stories, don't you, bud? Yeah. Like that. You want another Keegan's mom, Brenda, appreciates Bud's patience. If you read in front of a dog, it's a friendly environment. There's nobody to judge you, and so if you make a mistake and you keep going, Buddy doesn't know that you misspoke. So I think it's a great confidence builder. Buddy does his job for the pure love of people. We do throw the cookies in because that's a nice little icing on the cake for him. Keegan responds to Buddy's quiet attention. Because of Buddy, I read better now. Buddy is a good friend, and, he's, and Buddy is special to me, and Buddy is real patient when I read to him, and that's usually all I can think of. Did you like the part when Ricky brought Tom to camp, when Ricky was going to take the picture of Tom? His enthusiasm for coming to the classes since he met Buddy has been much higher. It's the willingness to be in the classes and to participate in reading that you see as a big change in Keegan. This afternoon, Buddy has another reading group to visit. So in between gigs, he plays with his fellow reading dog, Dakota. Sometimes it's really good if we go out with another team member and we'll go out and just run and play, and the stress just leaves, and they have a great time and just being dogs again. Come on! After
After his break, Buddy is ready to hit the books again, this time at a public library. When we go to the library, it's an activity with the children to bring out their interest in the books, which will give them a lifelong reading skill. He has to say hi before he can go to work. Sometimes the kids read Bud tributes okay. they've written. Buddy, you are so soft and fuzzy from Daniel. Buddy is a good reader. Buddy helped my sister and I read. Love, Taylor Harris. Very nice. Buddy, you are very beautiful and you smell so wonderful. All right, thank you. I think Buddy and I both enjoy this work. Buddy enjoys it because of all the attention he gets and the love that he gets. And I think it's my way of sharing my love for animals with people and, and trying to bring some good into their lives. And the first smile that we get, it makes it all worth it. And then we're just there to share. Let's go, bud. Connie still remembers how after her accident, her dog changed her life. Now, she and Bud are changing lives together. Many young readers will soar to new heights thanks to Bud. Over there by Bud. Dear Buddy, you look like a nice dog. I like dogs. I like you, Buddy. OK, can you give him a wave goodbye? Big wave. a boy. African Lion Safari is famous for its wild animals. So what's a Doberman doing in a safari park? Mercedes works with the big cats. Carol Precious is one of the animal managers. Her most important role is helping uh, take care of the cheetah cubs who have been born here. We've had 10 cubs uh, born in the last two years. Cheetahs are the fastest animals in the world on land, but they're vulnerable to health problems. The cheetah is one of the most difficult animals to breed. By nature, they're a pretty fragile creature. They're very prone to stress, uh, to pneumonia, to kidney failure. Cheetah moms can be unpredictable in captivity. Carol leaves cubs with their moms as long as possible, but some have carried their young out into the snow, endangering their lives. I realized I needed a partner to help work the cheetah. So four-year-old Mercedes became the resident cheetah nanny. She licks the cubs all over. This cleaning is critical. Without it, the cubs couldn't move their bowels and wouldn't survive. She immediately took to them, immediately started to groom them, protect them, sleep with them, and it became quickly evident that she had exactly what we needed. She had the confidence and she had this amazing maternal instinct. So she quickly became a valuable part of our program because we wanted also for the cheetah to associate with a fur-bearing mammal. Working with wild animals is a dangerous job, but for Mercedes, there's another risk. One day, uh, Mercedes and I were going over to the cheetah pen to get one of the cats out when accidentally she cut her foot. The metal fence was to blame. She just started to bleed profusely to the point where it wouldn't stop, and uh, I had to rush her to the veterinarian, and it really was touch and go. So, uh, fortunately, they were able to save her life. DNA tests revealed that Mercedes is a carrier of von Wildebrand's disease, a form of hemophilia. Carol thought hard about letting Mercedes continue her work. The cub's sharp teeth and claws could do fatal damage to their nanny. Even though Mercedes has a condition that um, could make it a little bit tricky for her in her life. I think she's a very content dog. Mercedes has to avoid bites and scratches from the cubs, so she reminds them that she's top dog. 
It was amazing to me how much she was actually teaching them. She was grooming them, but she was also making them realize that they were part of a pecking order. If the cheetah cubs started to gnaw on her ears or pick around on her jowls, actually trying to solicit food from her, which is exactly what cubs would do to their mother, she'll tolerate a lot. But when she has had enough, she'll just push them down to the ground with her mouth and make them submit. And it is amazing how she does that. But this nanny also has a playful side. And sometimes Mercedes seems to think she's a cheetah herself. Good girl. Come here. Cat is a young Doberman who is learning the job from Mercedes. Doberman pinchers are intelligent, easy to train, and naturally confident. We have started to introduce the very new young cubs that we have with new young Dobermans. Good girl, Kat. So that they will develop this bond and they will learn to respect those Dobermans. Ordinarily, a full-grown cheetah would rip a dog to shreds. But these cheetahs bonded with Mercedes as cubs, so they remember that their old nanny is still the alpha dog. They know Mercedes as an individual, and they definitely respond respectfully to her all the time. Carol regularly takes the cheetahs for long exercise runs. This one is uneasy about leaving the van, but once he sees his old nanny take the lead, he follows obediently. Mercedes has really shown me things that I would never have been able to learn from a book, so I think that my wonderful dog partner here has helped to make them healthy and strong and helped them to reach their full potential as cats. And um, I think that she has been just a wonderful working partner. Hopefully we'll have many years together.